Hello everyone, I'm Dan Salzer. Welcome to Panther Rewind. In this week's episode, we'll take a look back at the four Plymouth State athletes that were able to compete in the NCAA championships for their respective sports. And we will take a look at both the men's and women's hockey teams and how they fared in their conference tournaments before we look, take a look ahead at the start of the spring seasons as we gear up for home openers next week. For wrestling, it was a tough season for the Panthers, finishing the year with a 1-6 record in the dual meets, but were able to qualify one competitor for the NCAA championships at La Crosse, Wisconsin. For the first time since the 2011-12 season with Joey Allman at the 125 weight class. In his first round, Allman faced number 5 ranked Arnolfo Olia, And it was a close one for the first two periods. But Olia was able to open things up in the third. And finished with a major decision of a score of 16-6. to With that loss, Allman was sent to the consolation bracket. Where he faced sophomore Travis Jones of Milliken University from Illinois on that first day of competition. Jones won by a fall at 101 in the first period, eliminating Joey Allman from the NCAA championships. Plymouth State finished in a 15th place tie for 54th at the NCAAs. With that loss, Joey Allman finished his sophomore season with a record of 28-8, and improving his overall record for his first two seasons to 48-20. For track and field, on the men's side, they were able to compete or send one runner to the NCAAs, and that was Sam Burnett in the 3,000 meter. Burnett was able to finish the race at NCAAs in a 14th place finish with a time of 8.34.05, and nearly 10 seconds off his best time of the season. I was able to sit down and talk with Sam Burnett last week and got his take of what it was like competing in that race and what he takes away moving on to the spring season. It was just great. It was that was just the goal for the season. Just get there and just enjoy the experience. And like I had no expectations on me, so I was just gonna go in with pretty much a race strategy that was just an experiment. See what happens. If it didn't work out, then just change it up for next time. And that's what I did. I just laid back and just saw what would happen and see if I could respond. And well, I didn't have the energy to respond <laughs> because it was a long season. But next time around, I'll have the energy to respond. So. Taking a look at hockey first for the women's side, and it was a tough end to the Plymouth State season as they fell to number fourth ranked in the nation, Norwich University, in the 8-1 matchup of the NEHC tournament in the quarterfinals, 5-0. Plymouth State finishes the season with an 8-16-2 overall record under first-year head coach Michael Hahn. Norwich went on to win the NEHC title and earn the automatic bid for the NCAA tournament. On the men's side, the first-ranked Plymouth State Panthers in the MassCat Conference fell to number two seed Salem State in a thrilling championship game at Hanaway Rink on March 4th, 4-3. In that game, we saw Plymouth State get out to a 2-0 lead early on in the second period before Salem State stormed back for four unanswered goals later in the second, and that was enough for the Vikings to hold on for the conference title. In that game, Michael Economos was able to collect his 50th goal of his career. With that loss, it finished off an impressive season for the Panthers, which saw them lose only two games during the spring term, and they finished with an overall record of 19-6-2. And In other news for men's hockey, Michael Economos has now signed with the Knoxville Ice Bears of the Southern Professional Hockey League, and as his team now gears up for their playoffs down in Knoxville, Tennessee, Economos, through six games he has played, has notched two goals. Men's and women's skiing each qualified one for the NCAA championships hosted by the University of New Hampshire at Cannon Mountain earlier this month. Freitas Eisner's daughter for the women's side in the giant slalom on the first day finished in 19th overall with a two-run time of 217.58. On the men's side, Carl Koos, after having trouble in his first run, came home with a disappointing 30th place finish in the GS with a two-run time of 220. Point four three. Both were able to improve greatly two days later in the slalom events. Einer's daughter improved and came home 15th overall in that race with a two-run time of 159.93. With that finish, she becomes the first Panther on the women's side to post two top 15 finishes at the NCAA Championships. 
Koos finished an impressive 11th in the slalom with a combined time of 151.75. And with that, uh, earns the highest finish by a PSU skier at the NCAA Championships. That will do it for the winter seasons. When we come back, we'll take a look at the start of the spring seasons as we get closer to the home openers next week. Plymouth State Athletics is brought to you by Portland Glass, Biederman's Deli, Northeast Delta Dental, the New Hampshire National Guard, Merchants Auto and MerchantsAuto.com, Student Transportation, and by Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott. There's a path that takes you further in life. A breakthrough way of learning that prepares you for an ever-changing world. At Plymouth State, you'll find your way and learn more about yourself. It starts with our bold new approach to learning, the first of its kind at any university in the country. We call it our integrated clusters approach. You choose your area of interest, then focus your degree by adding courses from any discipline, from any department. Think of it as education without limits. Imagine how you'll grow with a truly interdisciplinary degree program. Then imagine how well Clusters prepares you for the ever-changing world out there. Clusters gives you hands-on experience working with top companies and institutions. You'll be part of a progressive team, developing innovative solutions to real-world problems. Education becomes dynamic at Plymouth State. Our faculty believe in you because collaboration works both in the classroom and beyond. You see faces up here not crowds. Set in the foothills of the White Mountains of New Hampshire, there's genuine magic here. It's the way a university should be, living in a vibrant community with a huge heart. Some degree programs even offer a 4 plus 1 accelerated track, which lets you complete your master's degree in just one year. We see you, the doer every day, the innovator, the tomorrow changer. Find your own path at Plymouth State University. See further up here. Welcome back to Panther Rewind. Despite all the snow outside, the spring seasons are underway. Both baseball and softball were able to escape to Florida for their season openers over spring break. Softball on their trip to Claremont, Florida finished the week with eight wins, six losses. Most recently splitting games this past Friday with a 3-1 win in the morning matchup versus Middlebury College before dropping a 3-0 decision to Luther College from Iowa. Leading the offense for the Panthers is junior third baseman Avery Davis and senior first baseman Katie Kennard. Davis so far this past week tallied seven RBIs with a 313 batting average. Kennard not far behind with five RBIs batting 250 with three doubles. Leading the pitching staff for the Panthers is freshman Caitlin Miller with a 4-0 record this past week with one save, with a minuscule 1.84 ERA and impressive 17 strikeouts. The Panthers return to action this Wednesday, March 29th at Salem State for a doubleheader at 4 and 6 p.m. Before their home opener is scheduled right now for Saturday, April 1st versus UMass Boston at 1 and 3, weather and field permitting. Baseball with their annual trip to Fort Myers, Florida, where they ended this week with a 6-5 record. 
earlier this week, the Panthers upset number 13th ranked Johns Hopkins in a 4-3 decision, which sparked a three-game winning streak for Plymouth State, which was broken on Saturday in another game by Johns Hopkins 5-4. Leading the offense for Plymouth State, senior third baseman James Garnett and junior infielder Nate Frederick. Garnett has tallied eight RBIs, 265 batting average, while slugging 441 with four doubles, one triple, and three stolen bases. Frederick's five RBIs and an impressive 481 batting average also tallied up a 611 on base percentage and a 667 slugging with the Panthers' only home run so far this season. Pitching has done well and has been led by sophomore Dylan Gata with a 2-0 record, 14 innings pitched with two complete games in non-conference play. And he also has a small 1.93 ERA with 13 strikeouts. Plymouth State Baseball returns to action in New England this Thursday, March 30th at Babson with the first pitch scheduled for 3.30. Panthers' home opener right now is not scheduled until Monday, April 10th, versus Framingham State at 3.30, weather and field permitting as well. Women's lacrosse is looking to pick up their first win of the season, having dropped their first two games, 14-12 at MIT in the season opener, before a lopsided 15-6 loss at SUNY Oneonta this past Tuesday. Leading the offense for Plymouth State was junior midfielder Megan Tingley, who is picking up where she left off last year already with nine points on five goals, four assists, which leads the team in both categories. And between the pipes for the Panthers, senior Megan Burl uh, has a 0-2 record with a 38.3 save percentage and a 14.5 hole goals against average. Panthers return to action this Friday, March 31st, for their home opener versus Castleton University at 4 p.m. Men's lacrosse is off to a slow start with a 1-3 record, most recently falling to Plattsburgh State this past Thursday, 18-6. Scoring right now for Plymouth State, seniors both on attack. Nico Soriento with 13 points, 8 goals, 5 assists, and senior Colin Claflin with 9 points on 6 goals, 3 assists. Splitting time between the pipes for Plymouth State, freshman Charlie Harrington with a 1-2 record has a 46.4 save percentage with a 12.77 goals against average. And senior Jason LaRiviere, who led the Panthers to a semifinal appearance in the Little East Conference last year, currently has an 0-1 record with a 44.1 save percentage and a 16.39 goals against average. Plymouth State is back in action Wednesday, March 29th at Clark for a 6 p.m. start time before returning for their home opener scheduled for Saturday, April 1st versus Salem State at 1 p.m. Well, that's going to do it for us here for Panther Rewind on this episode. Be sure to join us on social media. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, at Plymouth State Broadcasting, and on Instagram as well, Plymouth State Broadcasting. And also on YouTube, Plymouth State University Broadcasting. See all of our game highlights, player and coach interviews, and our previous episodes of Panther Rewind. That's going to do it. We'll see you all on Friday, March 31st, for the home opener for women's lacrosse at 4 p.m. Join us next week for another edition of Panther Rewind.